Hi, welcome to this 70s Art Deco inspired cinema room built right here in Western Australia, right in the suburbs. This room feels like something completely different. Hi, I'm Scott Rogan, founder and lead designer of Rogue Home Cinema. Really excited to show you through this recent project where we had a huge amount of input and inspiration from the owners, collaboration with us to find the perfect balance of a unique personalized cinema that feels warm and comforting while being epic and huge as well with a few surprises along the way. So let's get into it. This room was always meant to be an entertainment space, but it started off with a big TV and actually a quite a cool collection of audio. The owner here had a big AVR, some, which is the big heart and soul of a, a sound system in a home theater. Bunch of nice German made speakers as well, but they really wanted to create something special in here, something more immersive and focused. It ended up being a room that had a little bit of everything, but with no real cohesive purpose. And I really love what's being created here as we found those unique qualities and added some balance, some flow, and actually a few really bold statements in the room as well while keeping actually really elegant. Importantly, we needed great sound and the big screen picture, only possible thanks to front projection technology where we've got a screen that's about three meters wide, uh, way bigger than what the ordinary TV can deliver. Over and above this with a screen size this big, it means having the speakers behind the screen, just like a real commercial cinema or studio where the lips and the sound and the action and the, that correlate to each other come from that same location. So when the viewers experience the action, it all becomes all the more seamless, all the more believable, which puts you more into the movie. With any custom cinema, the audio visual engineering was the absolute foundation. It's understanding how this was going to be placed around the room before we got excited about the decor and the finishes, which are really there to support the visual aspect and isn't the critical. In fact, can be the, the problem part of many rooms where the decor leads and the actual engineering, the sound and picture follows second. The first step with the great design is really understanding who the room is for. In this case, it's a family of five, uh, though with guests every so often coming into the space, but particularly the kids sharing this for like the kids' birthday parties and hanging out after school. So it was important to allow for a few more seats than just the five, with space always being critical. We really wanted those five seats to be great seats. And this meant having to look for a lounge that had plenty of space for width while still giving us the recliner feature, minimizing the space required by eliminating the armrests in between. So we've managed to get all five primetime seats along one main row, which has meant less disparity between the front and rear. Really the length in the room wasn't gonna support a two row cinema we've managed to nail it with the one row five. Primary row of seats want to be sitting in the sweet spot. What does this mean? Well, it's actually getting the sound and the sonics to immerse the listeners around the room. So having the seats right on a wall is not gonna be very immersive. We need the space around us to be able to create the big sound field. So the seats typically in most rooms and indeed with this one off that back wall, which is allowing a couple of things great seating position uh, for Sonics for that primary row. It still allows space in front for the beanbag row. And it means for those prime time events, the bar stools from the kitchen area can come in behind the primary row, creating a grandstand row of seating. And it turns this five seater cinema into around 16 for those odd occasions or the special occasions when more people are required. So the screen chosen for this room is a beautiful big cinematic size screen and it does allow the speakers behind which means it's a special woven material that gives us a great reflective picture though allowing the transparency of the audio to go through. This gives us the best of both worlds when it comes to seating position, positioning of the speaker height, and the all important real estate in the room, making sure that we've actually got space to enter the room while still having a massive screen because the entry in this space is actually up in the very front right hand corner 
of the room. It posed a bit of a challenge, though the acoustic screen uh, allowed us really more flexibility rather than less to get that job done. So the big screen requires a powerful projector. In this room, it was a perfect fit for the new Sony 4K units. These are absolutely brilliant, very dynamic, very colorful. And our favorite way of installing these are actually in a tidy little box. We keep that nice and neat and it gives the projector a great platform to sit on very stable, very rigid versus a ceiling mount style concept. So that's very neat up there and tucked away in a beautiful starlight fabric, which continues to add a bit more bling to the room as well. So the big pitch is only 50% of the real cinema experience. The rest is about sound. So we've got the big front stage, the main stage speakers up behind the screen, also with some subwoofers also placed along the front end. Effects channels these days are going to new levels. So the traditional surround sound was a couple of speakers along the back walls to add in a little bit of ambience. In this room, we've got the surround, we've got back speakers on the back wall, and we've got four speakers overhead on the ceiling, all monitored and firing back to the primary listeners. This features the full Dolby Atmos surround sound, and it is Awesome. Like any custom project, we never know exactly where we're going to end up, and one idea can lead to another, to another, to finally finding that perfect solution. So once the engineering was really crafted, it was a matter of finding some foundations on the style of the room. Now, interestingly, red wasn't a theme that was here from the outset. It's something that developed over time. And in fact, the Art Deco flavor and the Scarface feature actually came from existing artwork that was in the original room. That artwork was not a special signed collector's copy of Scarface, but it was obviously a movie and a theme that, uh, that stayed true to the clients for some time. So we actually thought, well, how could that be featured into the new room that fit in with the space required. We've got curtains through the space and we've got bars and we've got a lot of features. So there wasn't really any room to hang up picture, which led to the Easter egg idea, that special surprise that lurks as you enter the room. No one would actually notice it's there, but we went full scale, full size and epic Al Pacino Scarface hiding in the room when you least expect it. And what 70s or Scarface inspired room would not go without a full bar. And this was really important. This was a key feature to this room for entertaining, not just for movies, though for music concert and music to enjoy a drink with friends and family. So the bar was a key element here and there was the floor plan of this room featured only about a 180 millimeter nook in the back right corner of the room that ran by about two meters wide. So that little bit of nook space was just enough for us to be able to take advantage of that and sneak in a great scale bar along with a library underneath. And by the use of two-toning various fabrics and finishes of the cabinetry, we managed to hide speakers alongside the bar and even an equipment rack which would pretty well go unnoticed unless you knew what you're looking for. So now the 70s theme was underway and the Scarface had its moment. We searched for more textures and layers in this space, which led towards custom printed artwork, digital prints onto an acoustic fabric covering the rear speakers or the back speakers of the room, along with a bunch of acoustics. I say a bunch of acoustics. These are random looking products in various materials that really don't look that great. So we managed to hide all that behind the beautiful Art Deco finished panels at the back of the room. On the other side of the screen was another nook we could take advantage of. And in this case, it was all about the music with the record player installation and a nice tidy cabinet space to hide away all those records and vinyl. Because the equipment was featured all the way in the back corner of the room, it was a lot more convenient to access the records and the playback of some favorite vinyl by actually positioning that up at a nice comfortable height and a fun place right up near the speakers. Inspired by other features in the room was the Street Fighter 
to arcade game. Now this wasn't really gonna fit well into the new room and it really was out of theme somewhat. So we looked towards some new technologies which brought the classic arcade games into the room through the new controller set. Now that was still quite a large size and clunky size unit, so that was purpose designed to fit inside and under the screen, which some space otherwise underutilized and a great location to be able to include, connect and upgrade other gaming systems like PlayStation, Xbox, and the controllers and the chargers and all that stuff associated to that tucks away under the screen, sight unseen, and also eliminates people, again, having to get into the main rack of equipment in the back of the room. It's easy, it's fun, and it's just really practical. Any great place has ambience and a beautiful atmosphere. And that's exactly what a cinema should have. The moment you walk through the door, you should be really transcending everyday world and walking into somewhere truly special. So the room atmosphere itself really does play a big role in helping you set up for the wonders and magic and of the stories of the world through cinema rather than being stuck at the office desk or wondering what you're going to do tomorrow. So feature lighting is a great way of adding that extra going out to the movies feel. It relaxes you and it excites you at the same time and it feels like no other room in the house. In this room we feature over 42 channels of independent colored lighting strategically positioned in the little shadow edges and details of the room. Star lighting adds that really beautiful depth and feel to the room. Meanwhile primary lighting really essential as well. We've got lights that are focused, dimmable, warm in color tone, it just gets the light where we need it. And when it's time to tidy up all that popcorn, they're nice and bright and they allow for practical task lighting by day as well. Like any project that's upgrading an original concept, there's the ability to look at what parts can be utilized moving forward. I mean, the more resourceful we can be, the less money and expense needs to go into new stuff. So in this room, the carpet was a keeper, although removed during the construction, was kept and then reinstalled professionally, and that managed to work in well with our overall theme. Other existing components was actually majority of the sound system. Big Yamaha, AVR, big surround sound amplifier, the front three speakers, a couple of effects, and a few new effect speakers were ordered to top up the system and round off the big Dolby Atmos sound. I know you've enjoyed these insights to this stunning custom home cinema. For more inspiration and education, check out the website and more YouTubes to find out more. I'm Scott Rogan, founder and head designer of Rogue Home Cinema. And remember, with authentic cinema at home on any day, reality can go rogue.